Hi everyone, Steve here from Photoshop Essentials. In this video, the first in a series on making selections, I'll show you how to use two of Photoshop's most basic and yet most useful selection tools, the Rectangular Marquee Tool and the Elliptical Marquee Tool. If you're new to Photoshop, these are the selection tools you want to learn first. Together, they're known as the geometric selection tools because they draw selection outlines in rectangular or elliptical shapes. And while that may sound basic, they're both incredibly useful, and you'll come back to them again and again. Along with showing you how to draw selections, we'll also look at a few examples of how you can use each tool in your Photoshop work including how to crop images, how to copy a selection to a new layer, and how to convert your selection outline into a layer mask. I'm using Photoshop 2022, but any recent version will work. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. The Rectangular Marquee Tool and the Elliptical Marquee Tool are found in the same spot in the toolbar, directly below the Move Tool. By default, the Rectangular Marquee Tool is visible, but if you click and hold on its icon, you'll find the other tools hiding behind it, including the Elliptical Marquee Tool. There's also a single row marquee tool and a single column marquee tool, but they select only a single row or a single column of pixels, and since they're not very useful, I won't be covering them here. Notice that both the Rectangular and the Elliptical Marquee Tool share the letter M as their keyboard shortcut. So if you have a different tool active, like the Move Tool, pressing M will select whichever marquee tool is showing in the toolbar. To switch to the other tool, hold the Shift key on your keyboard and press M. And then to switch back to the previous marquee tool, press Shift M again. Now, the only difference between the rectangular and elliptical marquee tools is that one draws rectangular selection outlines and the other draws elliptical selection outlines. Other than that, they behave exactly the same. So I'll start by showing you the basics of how to draw selections. And for that, I'll keep things simple and use this white background. Then we'll switch over to some images and look at a few common ways to use each tool. We'll start with the Rectangular Marquee Tool, which draws rectangular or square selection outlines. If you click and drag with the tool, you'll draw a freeform rectangular selection outline. The outline is indicated by these marching ants. Anything inside the outline is selected, and anything outside is not. If you click and drag outside of an existing selection outline, you'll clear the selection and draw a new one. And if you click and drag inside a selection, you'll move the outline around. Now, we're not moving the pixels that we've selected. We're just moving the outline itself. And that's because we're dragging with a selection tool. If we were to switch to the Move tool and then drag inside the selection, we would move the actual pixels. I won't do that here, but we'll come back to that when we switch over to an image. If you start drawing a selection and then hold the space bar on your keyboard, you can drag to reposition the outline. Then release the space bar to continue drawing. And to remove a selection outline when you're done with it, go up to the Select menu and choose Deselect. Or press the keyboard shortcut Control D on a Windows PC or Command D on a Mac. Or you can just click anywhere in the document with your selection tool to deselect it. Notice that every time we drag, we draw the selection outline from its corner. But you can also draw it from its center. After you start dragging, hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and then continue dragging. When you're done, release your mouse button and then release the Alt or Option key. And to draw a selection as a perfect square, begin dragging with the Rectangular Marquee Tool, then hold the Shift key on your keyboard and continue dragging. When you're done, release your mouse button and then release the Shift key. Always remember to release your mouse button first and then whichever key you were holding down. If you release the key first, you'll lose the effect that the key was having. In this case, the square reverts back to a rectangle. So I'll keep the Shift key down, then I'll release my mouse button, and then the Shift key. By default, the Rectangular Marquee Tool draws selections freely at any size or aspect ratio. 
And that's because in the options bar, the style option is set to normal. But we can also draw a selection at a fixed ratio or a fixed size. If you set the style to fixed ratio, enter the ratio you need into the width and height fields. A ratio of 1 to 1 will draw a perfect square. If I set the width to 4 and the height to 6, I'll draw a selection at a 4 by 6 ratio. You can flip the orientation of the aspect ratio by clicking the swap icon, but you'll need to draw another selection outline for the change to take effect. And if you set the style to fixed size, enter a value in pixels, inches, or whichever measurement type you need into the width and height fields. I'll set the width to 800 pixels and the height to 600 pixels. Then all you need to do is click in the document to instantly draw the selection. If you click and drag, you can reposition the outline and then release your mouse button to accept it. Just remember to change the style back to normal when you're done or you'll be stuck at that size or aspect ratio the next time you draw a selection. Well, so far, we've learned how to draw one selection outline at a time, but you can also combine selection outlines to create more complex selections. Along the left of the options bar is a row of four icons. From left to right, we have New Selection, Add to Selection, Subtract from Selection, and Intersect with Selection. But the problem with choosing these icons in the options bar is that they are sticky meaning that they remain selected until you choose a different one. So a better way to use these options is with their keyboard shortcuts. And here's how they work. To add your next selection to the existing selection, press and hold the Shift key on your keyboard. You'll see a plus sign in the lower right of your cursor. Then drag out a selection outline, and the new one is added to the previous one. Now, the selection outlines don't need to overlap. You can add a completely different area to the selection by holding shift and dragging. And this way, you can have different parts of your image selected at once. To clear all of the selections, press Ctrl D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. To subtract an area from a selection, press and hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac. A minus sign appears in the lower right of the cursor. Then drag around the area you want to subtract, and you can subtract multiple areas from the same selection. I'll undo that by pressing Ctrl Z or Command Z on a Mac. And to keep the selection only in the area where your new selection and the existing selection intersect, hold Shift Alt on a PC or Shift Option on a Mac and you'll see a small X in the lower right of your cursor. Then drag around part of your selection. And when you release your mouse button, only the area where the outlines overlapped remains selected. There's one more option we need to look at, which is Feather. Feather adds softness or blurring to your selection edges. So if I was to increase the feather amount from 0, the default, to 2 pixels, I would add a 2 pixel blur to the edge of the next selection I draw. But the problem here is that you need to set the feather amount before drawing the selection. Changing it afterwards has no effect. So if you don't know how much blurring you need, this option isn't very useful. Plus, you need to reset it back to zero each time. Otherwise, you'll keep adding the same amount of blur to all of your selections. There are ways to add feathering after you draw the selection, and we'll see one of them when we look at converting a selection outline into a layer mask. So in most cases, you'll want to leave the feather value here in the options bar set to zero. And that's the basics of drawing selections with the rectangular marquee tool. So now let's switch over to some images and look at a few common ways to use it. I'll start by showing you how to crop an image around your selection, then how to copy your selection to a new layer. And just before we move on to the elliptical marquee tool, I'll show you how to convert your selection outline into a layer mask. 
So here's how to use the rectangular marquee tool as a quick and easy crop tool. I'll switch over to my first image. All of the images I'm using were downloaded from Adobe Stock, and you'll find links in the description. Now, Photoshop does include a dedicated crop tool, and I cover it in a separate video. But if you just need to crop something fast, the rectangular marquee tool works great. Just drag a selection outline around the area you want to keep. Hold the space bar as you drag if you need to reposition it, and then release the space bar to continue dragging. Then to crop the image, go up to the Image menu and choose Crop. And Photoshop crops away everything outside your selection outline. You can remove the outline by going up to the Select menu and choosing Deselect. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'll go up to the Edit menu and choose Undo Crop. So I can show you a great feature that a lot of people don't know about. If you drag out a selection outline and it's not exactly right, you don't need to start over and draw a new one. You can resize an existing selection outline by going up to the Select menu and choosing Transform Selection. The Transform Selection command works like Photoshop's Free Transform command, but with selection outlines instead of pixels. You can resize the outline by dragging any of the handles. By default, the aspect ratio is locked, so dragging one handle drags all of them together. To adjust one side at a time, hold the Shift key as you drag. Again, we're resizing the selection outline itself, not the pixels inside the selection. Then to accept it, click the check mark in the options bar. And then to crop the image, go up to the Image menu and choose Crop. This time, I'll remove the selection outline by going up to the Select menu and choosing Deselect. And that's how to crop images using the rectangular marquee tool. Later on, I'll show you how to crop images with the elliptical marquee tool and why it takes a few more steps. Next, I'll show you how to copy a selection to its own layer. And just for fun, we'll use it to create a simple picture-in-picture -picture effect. I'll switch over to my second image, also from Adobe Stock. So what I want to do here is select an area in the center to use as a smaller photo inside the larger one. So first, I'll make sure I have the rectangular marquee tool selected in the toolbar. Then I'll begin dragging out a selection outline. But because I started the selection in the wrong spot, the left side of the outline is too close to the woman's hand. So to fix that, with my mouse button still down, I'll hold the space bar on my keyboard so I can drag the outline over to the left. Then I'll release the space bar so I can continue drawing the rest of the selection. Now, before we copy the selection to a new layer, I just want to show you the difference between dragging inside the selection with a selection tool and dragging with the move tool. I'll select the move tool from the toolbar. We know that if we drag inside the selection with a selection tool, we move the selection outline itself. But if we drag inside it with the move tool, we move the actual pixels. And notice that not only have we cut a hole in the image by moving the selection, but Photoshop is filling the missing area with white. And that's because in the layers panel, we see that we're working on the background layer. Since background layers do not support transparency, Photoshop needs to fill that missing area with something. So it fills it with our current background color, which by default is white, as we see in the toolbar. I'll undo that by going up to the Edit menu and choosing Undo Move. A better way to work is to copy the selection to its own layer by going up to the Layer menu, choosing New, and then layer via copy, or by pressing the keyboard shortcut Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac. It won't look like anything has happened to the image except that our selection outline is gone. But in the layers panel, we see that the selection was copied to a new layer above the background layer. If we turn the background layer off by clicking its visibility icon, 
we see just the area we selected, surrounded by transparency. This means that we can now do something with our selection without affecting the image below it, or we can do something to the image without affecting the selection above it. Let's do both by creating a simple picture-in-picture -picture effect. I'll turn the background layer back on. We'll start by converting the rest of the image to black and white. Select the background layer, then click the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon and choose Hue Saturation. The Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer appears between the background layer and the layer that holds our selection. This means it will affect only the layer below it, not the layer above it. The options for the Adjustment Layer appear in the Properties panel. To remove the color from the image, drag the Saturation slider all the way to the left. Since the Adjustment Layer is not affecting the layer above it, the area we selected remains in color while the rest of the image below the adjustment layer has the color removed. To complete the picture-in-picture -picture effect, let's quickly add a border around the selection. In the Layers panel, click on the top layer to select it. Then click the Effects icon at the bottom and choose Stroke. In the Layer Style dialog box, click the Stroke Color Swatch. And in the color picker, choose white by setting the R, G, and B values each to 255. Then click OK. Make sure the position of the stroke is set to inside, which will give the border sharp corners. And then increase the size of the stroke using the slider. I'll set it to around 35 pixels. Then click OK to close the dialog box. And we now have our selection in color, a border around the selection, and the rest of the image in black and white. All thanks to that initial selection we made with the rectangular marquee tool. Before we move on to the elliptical marquee tool, here's how to turn your selection outline into a layer mask, and how to soften the edges of the mask using the feather option in the properties panel. I'll switch over to my third image. And just like we did last time, we'll keep part of the image in color and convert the rest of it to black and white. But this time, we'll do things differently. I'll select the rectangular marquee tool from the toolbar. Then I'll drag out a selection outline around an area in the center. This is the area that will remain in color. But instead of copying the selection to a new layer, this time I'll just go ahead and add the Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer by clicking the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon and choosing Hue Saturation. And just like before, the Adjustment Layer is added above the Background Layer. But notice that Photoshop used my selection outline to create a layer mask for the Adjustment Layer, which we can see in the Layer Mask thumbnail. The white part of the mask is the area that was inside the selection outline, and the black area is everything that was outside. The way a layer mask works is that the white part is where the contents of the layer are visible in the document, and the black part is where the contents are hidden. Since we're using the mask with an adjustment layer, the mask controls which part of the image is being affected by the adjustment layer and which part is not. If you think of the edges of the thumbnail as the edges of the image, only that smaller area in the center of the image will be affected. To remove the color, go up to the Properties panel and drag the Saturation slider all the way to the left. But Photoshop removes the color from the area we selected, not the area around it. To fix that, we need to invert the layer mask. So in the Layers panel, click the Layer Mask thumbnail to select it. Then with the Layer Mask active, go up to the Properties panel and click the Invert button. Inverting the mask turned the white area in the center to black and the areas around it to white which means that the adjustment layer is now affecting the areas around my selection, not the area inside it. Also in the Properties panel, we now have a Feather option, which we can use to soften the layer mask edges. I'll drag the Feather slider to the right. And we now have nice, soft transitions between the color area in the center and the black and white areas around it. And that's our look at the Rectangular Marquee Tool.
So now let's switch over to the elliptical marquee tool so we can quickly cover the basics. In the toolbar, I'll click and hold on the rectangular marquee tool, and then I'll choose the elliptical marquee from the list. The elliptical marquee tool works exactly the same as the rectangular marquee tool. The only difference is that it draws elliptical selection outlines instead of rectangles. Click and drag with the tool to draw a freeform elliptical selection. Click and drag outside an existing outline to clear the selection and draw a new one. Or click and drag inside the outline to reposition it. To reposition the outline as you draw it, hold the spacebar on your keyboard, drag the outline into place, and then release the spacebar to continue drawing. To remove the selection outline when you're done, go up to the Select menu and choose Deselect. Or press the keyboard shortcut Ctrl D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. Or just click in the document with your selection tool to deselect it. To draw an elliptical selection outline from its center, begin dragging, then hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and continue dragging. When you're done, release your mouse button and then the Alt or Option key. And to draw a selection as a perfect circle, begin dragging, then hold the Shift key on your keyboard and continue dragging. Again, remember to release your mouse button first, then the Shift key. In the Options bar, we have the same options we had with the Rectangular Marquee tool. The only new one is Anti-Alias, which adds a slight blur to the selection edges to keep them from looking too jagged. Anti-Alias should be left on. On the left are the same options for combining selections. We have New Selection, Add to Selection, Subtract from Selection, and Intersect with Selection. But again, you should avoid using these icons and instead use their keyboard shortcuts. So to add your next selection outline to the existing selection outline, hold the Shift key on your keyboard and then drag. Release your mouse button and the two selections are combined together. I'll undo that by pressing Ctrl Z or Command Z on a Mac. To subtract the next selection from the existing selection, hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and then drag around the area you want to subtract. Release your mouse button and the area is subtracted. Again, I'll press Ctrl Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo that. And to keep only the area where the next selection and the existing selection intersect, hold Shift Alt on a PC or Shift Option on a Mac and then drag. Release your mouse button and only the area where the two selection outlines overlapped remains selected. We have the same style options in the options bar. With style set to normal, we can drag an elliptical selection outline at any size or aspect ratio. But we also have fixed ratio and fixed size. If I choose fixed ratio and set the ratio to 2 to 1, then my selection outline will be twice as wide as it is tall. And if I choose Fixed Size, and I set the width to 800 pixels, and the height to 600 pixels, then all I need to do is click in the document to draw an elliptical selection at that exact size. Or I can click and drag to reposition the outline before releasing my mouse button. Remember to set the style back to normal when you're done, otherwise you'll keep drawing outlines at that fixed size or ratio. Lastly, we have the same feather option, which blurs the selection edges by the amount that you enter. But unless you know the exact feather amount you need, it's best to leave it at zero. You can always adjust it afterwards using something like the Feather option in the Properties panel, which we'll be looking at again with one of our images. And that's the basics of drawing selection outlines with the Elliptical Marquee Tool. So let's move on to the images and look at three common ways to use it. I'll show you how to crop an image as an elliptical shape and why it's different from cropping as a rectangle. Then we'll look at how to draw a second elliptical selection outline at the same size as the first. And finally, I'll show you how to create a classic vignette effect. We'll start with how to crop an image using the elliptical marquee tool. I'll switch over to my first image. 
Earlier, we learned how to use the rectangular marquee tool as a quick and easy crop tool. We can do the same thing with the elliptical marquee tool. But instead of cropping as a rectangle or square, we can crop the image as an elliptical shape or a circle. Make sure the elliptical marquee tool is selected in the toolbar. Then drag an elliptical selection outline around the area you want to keep. Hold the spacebar and drag if you need to reposition the outline, and then release the spacebar to continue dragging. And here's why cropping with the elliptical marquee tool is different from using the rectangular marquee tool. If we go up to the image menu and choose crop like we did with the rectangular marquee tool, even though our selection outline is elliptical, Photoshop still crops the image as a rectangle. It just uses the top, right, bottom, and left edge of the outline as the boundaries for the rectangle. Since that didn't work, I'll undo it by going up to the Edit menu and choosing Undo Crop. When we crop an image as an elliptical shape, what we really want is to delete everything outside the selection and replace it with transparency. So if your image is on the background layer, click the lock icon to convert it to a normal layer. Photoshop renames it Layer 0. Background layers don't support transparency, but normal layers do. Now, at the moment, we have the area inside the outline selected, but what we really need is to have everything outside selected, which means we need to invert the selection. So go up to the Select menu and choose Inverse. Then press the Delete key on your keyboard, and Photoshop deletes everything except the area in the center. We don't need the selection outline anymore, so go up to the Select menu and choose Deselect. We also don't need all of the extra space around the image, so to trim it away, go up to the Image menu and choose Trim. In the Trim dialog box, make sure Transparent Pixels is selected at the top, and that Top, Bottom, Left, and Right are all selected at the bottom. Then click OK and Photoshop trims away everything except the transparency in the corners. I have a separate video on cropping images as a circle where I also show you how to save the file with the transparent background. So be sure to check out that video to learn more, and you'll find a link in the description. I'll switch over to my next image, and this time I'll show you how to draw two selection outlines at the same size. So with this image, I want to highlight each person's face by drawing a circle around it. So with the elliptical marquee tool active in the toolbar, I'll start with the guy on the left. I'll begin dragging out an elliptical selection, and since I want the outline to be a perfect circle, I'll hold the Shift key on my keyboard, and then I'll continue dragging. With the Shift key still down, I'll add the space bar so I can move the outline and center him inside it. But before I release my mouse button, notice that the Heads Up Display, or HUD, is showing me the exact width and height of my selection outline. In this case, both are 1500 pixels. So, since I want to add a second selection outline at the same size, I'll remember 1500 pixels, and then I'll release my mouse button, at which point the display disappears. To add another selection at the same size, I'll first change the style in the options bar to fixed size. Then I'll set both the width and the height to that same 1500 pixels. And then to add my next selection to the existing selection, I'll hold the Shift key on my keyboard. Then I'll click and hold in the document to instantly draw the outline at the fixed size. And with my mouse button still down, I'll drag the outline to center the woman's face inside it. Then I'll release my mouse button. And I now have two circular selection outlines at the same size. Before I do anything else, I'll reset the style back to normal so I don't forget. Now that both selections are in place, I can copy them to a new layer by pressing Ctrl J on a PC or Command J on a Mac, and they appear on a new layer above the image. If I turn off the background layer, 
we see just the areas I selected. To draw the circles around them, I'll make sure the top layer is selected, and then I'll quickly add a stroke by clicking the Effects icon and choosing Stroke. In the Layer Style dialog box, my stroke color is already set to white from when I added one earlier, and the position is still set to inside, so I'll just lower the size to 30 pixels. Then I'll click OK to close the dialog box, and since both selections are on the same layer, the stroke appears around both. To finish off the effect, I'll quickly colorize the rest of the image. In the Layers panel, I'll select the background layer, and then I'll click the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon, and I'll choose Hue Saturation. The adjustment layer again appears between the background layer and the top layer, which means it will affect the layer below it, but not the layer above it. In the Properties panel, instead of dragging the Saturation slider, I'll click the Colorize option. Then I'll choose a color by dragging the Hue slider. I'll go with blue by setting the value to 200. This colorizes everything on the background layer, but not my selections above it. Finally, to fade the color, I'll lower the opacity of the adjustment layer to around 60%. Here's the effect without the adjustment layer, and here it is with the adjustment layer back on. Let's finish up by looking at a classic use for the elliptical marquee tool, which is to create a vignette effect. I'll switch over to my final image, and I'll make sure I have the elliptical marquee tool selected. The first thing we need to do is drag out an elliptical selection outline, and we want to make sure that it's centered in the image. So I'll start my selection in the upper left corner of the image, and I'll drag all the way down to the bottom right. Then to resize the selection outline, I'll go up to the Select menu, and I'll choose Transform Selection. This lets me resize the outline itself, not the pixels inside it. I need to resize the outline from its center, so I'll hold the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac as I drag a handle inward, making sure to add enough room for the border around the edges. Then to accept it, I'll click the check mark in the options bar. Right now, the center of the image is selected, but what I really need is to have everything around it selected. So I'll invert my selection by going up to the Select menu and choosing Inverse. Then to add a border, I'll add a solid color fill layer by going up to the Layer menu, choosing New Fill Layer, and then Solid Color. I'll accept the default layer name and click OK. By default, Photoshop uses black as the fill color, but it also opens the color picker so we can choose a different color. I'll choose white by setting the R, G, and B values to 255. Then I'll click OK. In the Layers panel, we see the fill layer above the image. And again, Photoshop used the selection outline to create a layer mask. The white areas around the edges are where the fill layer is visible in the document, and the black area in the center is where the image below the fill layer is showing through. All that's left to do now is soften the edges. So with the layer mask selected, I'll go up to the Properties panel, and I'll drag the Feather slider to the right. And there we have it. That's how to draw selections using the Rectangular Marquee Tool and the Elliptical Marquee Tool in Photoshop. In the next video in this series, I'll show you how to use the Lasso Tools. But if you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the Like button and subscribe to my channel to learn more about Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Steve Patterson from Photoshop Essentials.